This is about to be kind of an unhinged fragrance video. So prepare yourself and let's get into it. Today's video is all about fragrance. We're going to talk about perfumes, finding your signature scent, my favorite scents of the season, my favorite scents broken down by scent category, all of my favorite vanilla scents right now, as well as my favorite home fragrances, so diffusers and candles. It's a big one, and I'm really glad you're here, and if it's your first time, then welcome. My name is Becca. This video is actually sponsored by Sephora, and it's for the Sephora Fragrance for All event. So I'm going to include all of the info on screen and in the description box, everything's timestamped, everything's linked as always. The Fragrance for All event runs December 13th to 24th, and you can get 20% off your purchase of full-size fragrances. And it's a one-time use code. The code is fragrance20. It's 20% off for all tiers. So anyone who's a Beauty Insider member, it's free to join as always, and you can use it one time online, in store, or at Sephora at Kohl's. They also have a free same-day delivery code that you can stack with the fragrance 20 code from December 15th to 24th. To me, fragrance is really exciting because I think it's so evocative. It's the most subjective and personal and I think poetic of all of our senses. And for that reason, it can also be a little bit intimidating. I also think fragrance is the most like vibes based shopping that I do in all of beauty, meaning I shop for fragrance based on how it makes me feel, the mood it's evoking, the energy that I feel when I wear it, rather than shopping for specific specific notes. So you'll see I've broken down different scent categories by scent families, but I'm also going to describe scents based on when I wear them, the season I wear them in, the associations I have with them, and also include some scents that I think make the best gifts. By the way, some of the scents I'm going to show you are smaller size or travel size. The Fragrance for All event applies to full size fragrances, but the ones I'm showing are all ones that I plan to purchase when I finish the small size. I'm also going to tell you what's on my wish list and what I'm thinking about picking up. Let's start with perfumes. I've mentioned I've broken this down by category, but I thought this scent profile deserved its own category, and that scent profile is vanilla. Full disclosure, I don't love super sweet gourmands, but these are all really interesting, complex, warm gourmands that I love to wear. First, I'm going to talk about the Net Te Vanille perfume. I picked this up in October, and I fully intend on picking up the full size. It is incredible. It has notes of salt accord, cardamom, turmeric, green tea, but it also has some floral notes like magnolia. So it does evoke these notes of tea, like the cardamom, the spices that you find in tea, but it also has these uplifting mid to base floral notes that prevent it from becoming too desserty. It settles into the skin in a really nice creamy way. I already have a full size of the next one on the way. It's the Boy Smells Vanilla Era perfume. And this is another complex vanilla. It obviously has that creamy vanilla quality to it, but there's a bit of white tulip to uplift the vanilla and then it has these like coffee amber heart notes that give it a little bit of depth and ground it to balance out the sweetness. The amber helps it settle into a slightly muskier skin scent as you wear it throughout the day. And the first time I smelled this, I instantly fell in love and I knew I needed the full size and it's already on its way to me. Then I have two slightly darker, richer vanillas. Probably, let me go with this one, the richest vanilla and the smokiest and the most intense is the Tom Ford Tobacco Vani. First of all, Tom Ford bottles are always absolutely stunning. Obviously, per the name, this has notes of tobacco. So it's going to give you this like smokiness and this earthiness that really grounds this perfume and makes it a little bit darker and a little bit more mysterious. But it's balanced by notes of ginger, so you get a little bit of spice and you get a little bit of woods that grounds it into a muskier scent as it wears throughout the day. One spritz of this will last you all day long. You'll smell it like if you spray it on your sweater, you'll, you'll smell it the next day. It's one of those scents that just really stays with you and people always ask what I'm wearing when I am wearing this. To me, this is like a special occasion vanilla. This one is a little bit sweeter. It's the Kaoli Vanilla 28, um, but it still has some woods notes and it's actually grounded by patchouli. You're not going to smell patchouli in an obvious way. It's definitely got that creamy Tonka vanilla quality to it and it is sweet 
but it's also a little bit musky too. It's almost like a musky vanilla brown sugar. I'm gonna finish off with two lighter vanillas that I think you can wear in the daytime. They're sort of signature scent appropriate because they're not as heavy. So the first one is Dead Cool Taunt, and this one is really nice because it's a lighter, fresher vanilla. It's not quite as gourmand, and it's balanced, like it has notes of bergamot in it, which again, you're not gonna smell citrus, but it makes the vanilla a little bit more uplifting and a little bit more of a sheer vanilla. The last one is the Fleur Hair and Body Fragrance Mist, and I love this, oh, and it's vanilla skin. I love this because it's sweet. You do get that true, like, youthful quality of vanilla, but it's also grounded by some woods notes. I think it has sandalwood, cashmere wood. So even though it's sweet, it's not sickly sweet, and I think because it's a hair mist, um, or a hair and body mist. It's not as concentrated, so you can get away with a sweeter scent because it wears into the skin, it wears off a little bit more quickly. It's a little bit less of a commitment. So those are all of the vanilla scents. I avoided vanilla for a long time just because I associated it with being too sugary, too sweet, almost juvenile. But I think there's a vanilla in here for everyone with a lot of complexity and diversity of scent types. This next scent transitions us from vanilla into what I call my winter holiday Scents. These are more seasonal scents that I love to wear when it's winter or when it's cold out because it brings out the best in these scents. So the perfect transition is obviously Maison Margiela's By the Fireplace. They describe the scent as burning wood and chestnut, and it's very much a unisex scent. I know burning wood might sound scary, but this will evoke memories of like a crackling fireplace, but also it has vanilla in it. It brings this creaminess and this warmth to this scent. And it also has spices. So you're gonna smell some clove. You're going to smell, uh, what is it, chestnut. It's very much chestnuts roasting by an open fire, on an open fire that one. It's all of that. And because it's not super sweet, it's a really good unisex scent. I mean, any scent is a unisex scent. Anyone can wear any fragrance as far as I'm concerned, but because it's not sweet, it's one that I would have Sean wear or I've recommended friends buy for their more mask partners. Another one that I would categorize similarly, but has a different scent profile is Ellis Brooklyn A Prey. This scent is inspired by skiing and being on the slopes. So you get that woody quality to it. You get notes of juniper and a slightly evergreen scent, but it's not a classic woods. There's a creaminess to it that actually I think has a bit of bourbon and it's also grounded by a bit of vanilla and praline. You don't smell it obviously as a vanilla scent. Like it's not a lactonic creamy scent, but it dries down and wears into the skin in a slightly muskier way because you get those slightly sweeter notes at the end. But it also has this like freshness. I can't describe it. I wouldn't say it's minty, but the evergreen notes really lift this and give it a bit of sharpness that I really, really love. And this is another great unisex scent. I feel like that's a good transition into more woodsy, earthier, muskier scents. One of my favorite and probably most unisex scents on here is Maison Louis Marie's uh, number four, Bois de Balancourt. I first smelled this as a candle in a store, and I actually will mention that later on, and I just had to have it. This is actually their perfume oil. It's a roll-on, but they also have it as a candle. They have it as a perfume. It's a true wood scent in that it's very sandalwood forward. It also has notes of vetiver and amber and cedar wood. It also has notes of vetiver, amber, cedar wood, a little bit of spice to it in a very subtle way. For me, it wears so nicely with my body chemistry. Wood scents generally do. It just wears into a really nice musky sort of scent. And I personally feel like it just smells expensive. Like it smells like a luxury store, which is maybe what I associate with it. It's also a really good signature scent because it's not too intense. It's not too sweet. It's not too bright. It just wears into the skin, but it's like you, but the expensive version of you. Then I have a lighter wood scent that I just can't 
can't stop talking about. It's Fleur's father figure. This is their newest or one of their newer perfumes and it is woodsy, but it also has a brightness and a freshness to it. And it's actually also very fig forward. It's fig forward, but it's not a fruity scent. It's very much woodsy, earthy. It opens with a fresher fig note and then it settles into slightly more of a sandalwood, orris note. I love anything with orris. And it also has a little touch of vanilla in here that adds it some creaminess and roundness. It's also a really good everyday sort of signature scent. I've received a lot of compliments since I got this and have worn it a lot. And the last one in the woods category is one that I think is like the heaviest hitter. It's probably the most masculine of the fragrances I have on here. And it's uh, Boy Smells Hinoki Phantom. If you've smelled this, you know it has a real depth and masculinity smokiness to it. It's also an amazing candle and I'll discuss that in a little bit. The Boy Smells bottles are incredible. I think they're very giftable because they have this sculptural beauty to them. They just look good even just sitting on a counter. Hinoki Phantom has notes of cypress, Hinoki wood, and moss as well. So there's a bit of woodsy complexity and it is a powerful scent it has this intensity and depth to it. And that smokiness really comes through because of the Hinoki. My next category is what I'm calling skin scents, musky scents. These are scents that I think you could wear anytime, anywhere, any day with any outfit. You could call these your signature scents, the kinds of scents that are probably inoffensive to most people. You could wear it at the office or to work or something, depending on your work. And they're not too much of a statement, but they still add that little bit of something. The first one is Glossy AU. And this one is kind of hard to pin down, actually. There's a bit of woodsiness, there, there's a bit of muskiness. It definitely has white floral notes, but it's not so strong that it comes off as like a sharp scent. That's the reason why they call it Glossy AU. It's supposed to smell like you, but better. Almost like you just got out of the shower or you're really clean. It has that freshness, but it settles into a very close to the skin musky scent. If you like Glossy AU, I think you'll also like Fleur Missing Person. It has a similar freshness in terms of a bit of white floral, but it's a little bit brighter and a little bit more floral. So there's some jasmine, there's orange blossom in here. It's a little bit brighter than say Glossy AU. It does wear into the skin in a similarly musky way. It's sheer in the way that Glossy AU is sheer. And what I mean by that is that it's not um, a very intense scent. It doesn't feel like the fragrance is wearing you. It just feels like you, but better. <laughs> the last in this category is Dead Cool Milk. And Dead Cool Milk actually opens with a bit more sharpness, I would say, than the other two. I think the bergamot note really comes through, but then it settles into a woodsy muskiness. It has an amber heart note that comes through, and um, that sharpness really does subside throughout the day. This is something I wear all the time. I feel like it's, if I don't know what to wear, I reach for this a lot. I mean, all three of these really, if I don't know what to wear, but I'm going out, but I wanna wear a little bit of something, this is what I choose. The final category is fruity and floral, but this is kind of a diverse category. It's a bit of a catch-all and you'll see why. The most obvious fruity scent in here is Fleur's Tangerine Boy. This um, is such a bright, juicy scent. I mean, if you like citrus, if you like tangerines, it captures that sharpness and that sweetness. It's really fresh. It also has notes of lemon and ginger to really add to that uplifting citrus quality. You also get a little bit of that like bitterness of of a citrus rind, but it has a wood heart note. It has an amber heart note. So it does um, ground the freshness. It doesn't go out of control into like a super sweet artificial citrus. It smells like real citrus to me. Leaning more floral. I'm very picky about florals, I have to say. Um, this is one I really like. I do have a full size, but I cannot find it for the life of me. It's the YSL Lieb. And this has notes of lavender and orange blossom. It has that floral quality, but it also has some musky depth to it. It's one of the few true florals that I have on here, but I think it's because it's so balanced. I tend to shy away from powdery floral 
florals and I like something a little bit warmer and more grounded. Then I have one that's categorized as a floral, but it's not really a typical floral by any means. It's Boy Smells Cashmere Kush. This is another very unisex masculine scent on this list, probably second only to Hinoki Phantome. This one is interesting because you get that muskiness of the Kush note, but there's also this powderiness that comes through. There is a white floral note. I think it's geranium in this, but it doesn't smell like flowers. It's not like that sharp powdery note. It just adds to the complexity of that like sticky, earthy Kush note. You'll also see this again as a candle, but as a perfume, it just has this really interesting, complex, floral but woodsy quality to it. The last one and the last um, perfume body fragrance is Fleur's Mango Wood. This one is so fun. It's juicy. It has that fruity, juicy quality of mango. There's a playfulness to it. There's like a girlishness to it, but it's not um, artificially sweet. And it is also balanced by um, some woods notes as well as pink pepper. So it doesn't become sickly sweet or too gourmand. It still remains very wearable and it's grounded by some woods notes by Oris. Again, I mentioned I love Oris in anything. So it has, um, oh, and the base has patchouli. So it has this like grounded quality to it. So it opens really fresh and juicy and then it wears into the skin in a slightly muskier way. In terms of my wish list, I have quite a few that I have in my shopping cart right now. The first is Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, obviously not a new release by any means, but I finally was able to test it on my skin and I really loved how it wore throughout the day. There's also a new perfume line at Sephora called World of Chris Collins. And I was just browsing these and currently in my cart is Lost in Paradise. Let me tell you why it's a peach based perfume. The notes are, or the key notes are coconut water, peach skin, and salted musk. That sounds so amazing. The description is that it's like salt spray off the Caribbean Sea, which I'm like, yes, I definitely need that. I'm really curious how it'll be balanced by the salty notes. So that's on my wish list. And the last one on my wish list is Kaoli's newest Eden Sparkling Lychee. That one sounds so good. It has notes of sparkling lychee, rose damascena, and vanilla absolute. So I'm definitely curious about that. Mostly I just love anything with lychee in it and I always want to try it. So that's definitely on my wish list as well. Then we're going to move into home fragrance. I have a bunch of candles to recommend. You know, I'm a candle freak. I have so many that I love. Let's start with my favorite holiday scents, my favorite winter scents, those kind of seasonally appropriate scents. And these are all also really good gifts. If you follow me, you know, I always burn Nest Holiday. It's probably my all time favorite holiday candle. This is a brand new one, but I also have one open basically in every room of the house right now. Nest Holiday, oh, it smells so good. It has a real true sharp pine note. There's spices, there's pine, there's clove. There's also a bit of cinnamon. It's almost like all of the good things that go into like a mold cider, as well as the sharpness of a true Christmas tree. It's just so good. It doesn't get better than this for a holiday candle, in my opinion. I also love Birchwood Pine by Nest. That one is more of a classic true evergreen pine scent. If you want only Christmas tree scent, that's what I would go for. Then I have Maison Margiela's By the Fireplace as a candle, and I love it so much. I'm currently burning one and I have a backup because I can't be without it. This obviously has the same notes as By the Fireplace as a perfume, but as a home fragrance, it's a little bit different. The candle, obviously like the burning flame really brings out the fireplace notes, but it also has a real creaminess to it that comes out as the candle sort of fills your room. Holiday is like when I want a tree scent and by the fireplace is when I want a cozier, warmer scent. And then I have what I would call my more winter scents and these are woodsy scents and it's a, a trio of heavy hitters from Boy Smells. Obviously, I really like the brand. So the first one is Hinoki Phantom. I mentioned all of the notes in the perfume. As a home scent, this is a really nice like 
nighttime scent. If you're doing a movie night, it has this depth to it and it really envelops you. It smells expensive. Um, I feel like you also get a bit more of the spicy notes that come through as well. The next one is Slow Burn, and this is my backup actually. This is what the box looks like. It's beautiful, it makes a really good gift. Um, this scent is really special, really interesting. So it has a woodsy quality as well, but it's sort of spicier and a little bit more complex because you get notes of incense and black pepper. So there's this spicy quality to it. It's balanced by raspberry, tonka, and then it has a bunch of woods like guyac wood, amber, and smoked papyrus. So like Hinoki, it has um, a smokiness to it. This is darker to me. The smokiness of this one to me is balanced a little bit more by the incense. So it's unexpected and the vessel itself is stunning. It's got this ombre, kind of like the box has this ombre quality. I love it so much. And the last one is Cashmere Kush. Um, again, this is my backup. I have one burning already. Cashmere Kush is an amazing signature home scent. It will make your house smell expensive. Um, again, this is a scent that, like Hinoki Phantom, originated as a candle, and you get that real complexity that comes through. I like this because I feel like the powdery notes and the slightly floral notes come through in a different way than they do on the skin. You get that stickiness from the cannabis flower, cashmere wood, amber vetiver, but then you get the tulip and powdery musk. And I think that balances it and uplifts the scent and prevents it from being as heavy or as deep, say, as Hinoki Phantom or Slow Burn. It doesn't have the spicy quality. This one has that uplifting floral quality. And again, I don't like powdery florals, but I love Cashmere Kush. Then I have some woodsy scents that I would describe as home neutrals. So these are candles that you can burn anytime. And I have the Maison Louis Marie Bois de Balancourt candle. This is the candle that I mentioned I um, smelled first in a store and then I knew I had to have. Do I have a problem? <laughs> I have a backup of this. So this is the new one. It looks like this. It's a really generous size candle. Again, top notes are sandalwood and cedarwood. So you do get that woodsiness, but then there's um, a complexity. It has notes of mid notes of vetiver, nutmeg, cinnamon, base note, amber wood. It feels so luxe. It almost feels like the scent equivalent of like a cashmere sweater or a cashmere blanket. It just envelops you, it's warm, it's cozy, but it's also the kind of thing that's not so um, specific that you have to burn it at a special occasion. You can burn it anytime. Then I have a Woods Vanilla candle, and this is for you if you like something a little bit sweeter, a little bit creamier. And this is Nest Driftwood Chamomile. Again, I have a backup. Um, I've already burned through, I think, two of these in the past. So it comes like this. The vessel is this beautiful light blue. It has an earthiness to it from the driftwood, but it also has a vanilla base. So you get creamy, you get cozy, you get vanilla and you also get a slightly botanical quality from the chamomile. This is something that I love to burn when I'm taking a bubble bath because it has that warm quality to it. It's lactonic, but it's not overly sweet. It's not a true gourmand. Um, it's just another cozy, cozy candle on the slightly sweeter side than some of these wood scents that I've mentioned because of the vanilla. It's just the right balance in my opinion. And then I'm finishing with fruity florals and these won't surprise you. Um, the first one is Boy Smells L.E.S. And L.E.S. has notes of black currant, peach blossom, jasmine rice, cardamom, and white cedar. This is really interesting because it opens with a juicy fruity note. You get that currant, you get that peach blossom, and then you get the creaminess that comes through from the jasmine rice. But then it's balanced by the peach blossom note, you get that springtime kind of floral that comes through, but it's a fruity floral. It's probably like the girliest candle that is on this candle list. It's something I go for when I'm in that slightly sweeter mood and when I'm in the mood for something a little bit fresher. And the last fruity candle that I have to mention is Nest Sicilian Tangerine. This is a really good gift. I mentioned Tangerine Boy. This one, is an even truer, 
sweeter, brighter tangerine. It actually also has notes of mango and passion fruit. So it has a bit of that tropical fruit quality that I think really brings out that brightness of the tangerine. You get a little bit of the bitterness of a true citrus rind. You get that sharpness that comes through. And this candle is so strong. It's a really good um, living room candle. It's a good kitchen candle if you wanna clear out any food scents. Citrus candles are really good for that. Um, but it's something that I burn a lot, especially in spring and summer when I want to fill my home with something bright and juicy, something that feels energizing. That's when I go for like a brighter citrus note. Um, I also love Nest Grapefruit for a similar reason. Grapefruit's really great because it has a little bit more of that bitterness. It's not quite as sweet. I burn both of those all the time and I have for years. In my opinion, any candle that I mentioned here makes a really good gift because candles are the kind of thing that everyone appreciates, but not everyone wants to buy for themselves. They're definitely an indulgence, but I feel like they're a really thoughtful gift for that reason, whether it's for holidays or for a hostess gift or Valentine's Day, you know, it just it's an experience. You're gifting someone an experience that will last a good amount of time. And that concludes this very long, very detailed, kind of maybe unhinged fragrance video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions for me about any of the scents, or if you need suggestions, let me know in the comments. I also have so many other fragrances that I love at Sephora that I just didn't get to in this video for the sake of time. So let me know what you're looking for in the comments. Again, I'll have all of the info, the links to everything in the description box. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you again to Sephora for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.